The News 4 Rundown is sponsored by FH Fur. Metro is dealing with a trespassing trend. One person died after trying to ride on the top of a train. And even more people are putting their lives at risk when they climb onto the tracks. Adam Tuss shows us how often it's happening. Plus a shoplifting surge. One grocery store chain says it's costing them millions of dollars. The steps they're taking to protect profits and their customers. And for the first time in 50 years, you could have a chance to swim in the Anacostia River. I'll explain how it's happening after after the river's been off limits for so long. You're watching the News 4 Rundown. Get your swimmies, we're doing this. I don't know, Tommy, <laughs> you're braver than me. Thanks for joining us for the News 4 Rundown. It's our newscast streaming for you. I'm Tommy McFly. And I'm Un Yang. It's Monday, June 26th, and we begin with a look at some of the top stories we're following. A Bethesda man is under arrest, accused of stabbing his parents inside their home. Police were called to the area around Green Tree Road overnight. Investigators say the man and his parents got into an argument and he grabbed a knife and stabbed them. Paramedics took the victims to the hospital with serious injuries. Police arrested the man. There is no word what sparked that argument. Kevin Bryant had just moved into his new apartment when he was found dead earlier this morning after a fire in the district. Firefighters blame an accidental blaze that started overnight in the apartment's kitchen at a building on Brandywine Street in Southeast. 42-year-old Julio Basurto is under arrest for allegedly kidnapping and sexually assaulting a woman in Arlington County. Police say the incident happened in May in the nightlife area in Clarendon. The victim left a business on Clarendon Boulevard when Basurto allegedly drove up in a car and the woman got in. According to police, he was not operating as a rideshare driver. Police say Basurto sexually assaulted her during that ride before she managed to get out. And trespassing on the tracks and on top of the trains. Can you believe that? A dangerous growing trend on Metro. Cameras capturing all these alarming incidents. So people jumping on the tracks and then testing fate with every step. Last week, a person was killed on the red line attempting to subway surf on top of a moving train. News 4 transportation reporter Adam Tuss has details. Metro is having an issue with people going where they shouldn't. Take, for instance, this rider who was caught on surveillance video climbing across the tracks at the Eisenhower Avenue station last week. That's 750 volts of electricity that he's stepping over as he crosses two third rails. And exclusive side-by-side -side video that News 4 has obtained of this rider crossing the tracks at the L'Enfant Plaza station last week. A train had to stop to avoid that rider. Metro's general manager, Randy Clark, talking to News 4 about the issue. We've had a fair amount of trespassers lately. We have, uh, you know, we are doing everything we can to kind of monitor that in real time. Metro says there have been 32 reports of trespassers on the tracks so far in April, May and June. And Clark confirms to News 4 that a teenager was in fact subway surfing, as it's known, in a deadly incident last week at the Rhode Island Avenue station. Videos like this one that show riders climbing outside of a moving train and attempting to ride on top of it are being posted to social media. We really discourage anyone from getting out of that train, and if you see anything, immediately report it to transit police or the closest metro worker. Uh, you know, we, we've had so a... So that did happen? We, we, we had a, an individual that trespassed out, outside of the train and, and, and had a tragic incident. New York City Mayor Eric Adams talking about the recent subway surfing numbers in his city. When you think about it, 2023 alone, six total incidents, two DOAs. Riders we talk to say they can't believe someone would be that careless with their own life. I mean, I don't, what do you even do about that, man? Like, like how do you counteract just like kids doing stupid, stupid stuff, you know? Metro's GM calling all of this a dangerous trend. Adam Tuss, News 4. It's hard to wrap around, wrap your head around why anyone would risk their lives and do things like that. It just makes no sense. Yeah, th deeply stupid to mm -hmm. do that. We're getting closer to the 4th of July holiday weekend, and it's expected to be a busy one on the roads. Melissa Malay has an early look at the best times to travel if you're headed out of town. 
I'm Melissa Malay with a look at your first four traffic. AAA says to expect record-breaking travel this holiday weekend. Almost 51 million people expected to travel in the U.S. 43.2 million going to be traveling by car. So the roads are going to be busy. These numbers about 2 million people higher than last year. So gas prices average 350 right now. That's compared to $4.80 last year. So no big mystery as to why more folks will be on the roads. But the roads will be busy, so travel at those off-peak times. Map out an alternate just in case. Pack an emergency kit, and if you have kids like me, pack those snacks. And a heads up, this Friday the 30th is expected to be the busiest day on the road. Average travel times will be up around 30%. So if you want to try and avoid the traffic, AAA says to leave before 10 a.m. or after 6 p.m. And the snacks, also good advice. Yes. Thanks, Melissa, Lots for that. Lots of snacks. <laughs> Planes grounded in our area airports yesterday. We've learned that unexpected problems with the communication system created this headache. The FAA was forced to temporarily pause flights at airports, leaving many people frustrated with delays and long lines. As you can imagine, the ground stop was sparked by a repair to a comms system at a Virginia facility. It also created a ripple effect beyond D.C. Following the repairs, the FAA says they switched to a backup system so flights could resume, but it's still not exactly clear what the issue was with the communication system. A local grocery chain is sounding the alarm over shoplifting concerns. Giant Food says these crimes are increasing exponentially and it is costing the company millions of dollars each year. Now, News 4's Mauricio Casillas spoke with Giant's president about this concern, his concerns, everyone's concerns, and what can be done to keep customers and employees safe. Shoplifting is nothing new, but president of Giant Food, Ira Kress, says the trend he's seeing now is like nothing he's seen in his nearly four decades of work. The level of theft and the level of violence associated with the theft have probably increased five to ten times in the last three years. Kress says more often than not, there are organized crime groups that are targeting stores and taking multiple items at once. It is for profit, plain and simple. Uh, these are organized retail crime groups or individuals who are stealing product en masse. As a result, Giant has hired more security guards, reduced store hours, shut down secondary entrances, and put some items in lockboxes. We've locked down baby formula, and we've locked down razor blades, and we have some stores that have locked down specific types of soap uh, or deodorants or air fresheners. Uh, some products are more monetizable than others. A tragic example of these instances escalating took place here at this giant in Oxon Hill in November when police say a giant security guard was shot by an alleged shoplifter. The security guard fired back and both people ended up dying. It shouldn't occur. Um, no one should go into a grocery store and not leave it alive. No one. And it's not a problem that's only impacting Giant. The National Retail Federation recently told the News 4 I-Team and consumer investigative reporter Susan Hogan that retailers have seen an 80% increase in violence associated with retail crime since the pandemic. It's very difficult to, to ask your employees to step into harm's way because not only are, the, are they endangering themselves, if, if there is a weapon involved, they're endangering all the consumers who are in that store. As for Cress, he believes stricter penalties need to be imposed on those committing the crimes. Absent those tougher laws, absent the application of those laws and the enforcement of those laws, we continue to see crime escalate and violence escalate. Mauricio Casillas, News 4. Thanks, Mauricio. And the gunman who opened fire inside of a gay club in Colorado Springs will spend the rest of his life in prison. Authorities say Anderson Aldrich walked into Club Q in November in 2022 and started shooting. Five people were killed and 17 others were injured in that attack. The shooter was tackled and disarmed by club goers before he was arrested. Aldrich was charged with 323 criminal counts, including first degree murder and bias motivated crimes. Survivors and family members of the victims spoke in court today before a judge sentenced Aldrich to life in prison.
Now let's go to the latest on that Titan submersible disaster. The U.S. Coast Guard has launched its highest level investigation to determine what went wrong that led to the death of all five people on board. The Titan was less than two hours into its descent toward the Titanic wreckage on the ocean floor last Saturday when it lost communication with the mothership Polar Prince. The incident prompted a massive multi-nation search and rescue operation in the North Atlantic for several days. Officials say they were reviewing voice recordings and data data recordings from the Polar Prince and are conducting interviews with crew members who helped in that attempted rescue effort. The board will first and primarily work to determine the cause of this marine casualty and the five associated deaths. They can make recommendations to the proper authorities to pursue civil or criminal sanctions as necessary. Experts are now focusing on the Titan's carbon fiber hull amid allegations that its owner Stockton Rush, who was among the five killed, apparently ignored repeated warnings about the vessel. The company, which has closed indefinitely, said it has no additional information to share at this time. Investigators are working to recover debris from the sea floor, and military experts found debris of the ill-fated submersible about 1,600 feet from the bow of the Titanic itself on Thursday. 1971, Nixon was in office, the senator's baseball team was transferred to Texas to play, and D.C. residents could not elect their own mayor. It is also the last time you could legally swim in the Anacostia River, but now there is a chance for you to make a splash again. <laughs> Tommy, you can explain how this is happening after being off limits for more than 50 years. I mean, what is going on? Yeah, and so five decades, it became illegal, as you said, in 1971. More than 30 years later, in 2005, they began working on the local rivers, including under the Clean Water Act. And by 2018, the Anacostia River Tunnel began capturing 90% of the sewage and sending it to treatment. Also, that's when D.C. started accepting permits for Anacostia swim events. But this year, this year is the first permitted swim event. So would you swim in the Anacostia River? Yes, that Anacostia River. That's the 50-year-old question because for the first time it is legal to take a dip and Trey Sherrod from Anacostia River Keeper joins us. You're the group that made this possible. I got a lot of questions. <laughs> First, how is this possible that we can swim in the river if it's not technically legal yet? So it is illegal to swim anywhere in the District of Columbia that's not a swimming pool unless you have a permitted swim event. And so the District Department of Energy and Environment is the agency responsible for permitting a swim event as far as whether or not the water quality is safe to swim in. And because of all the work by the sewage tunnel with DC water and a lot of other things, we're actually seeing good water quality a whole lot of the times we look. Okay, so I think it must be a little bit of the Anacostia River needs a better PR firm. Because when I was talking about this, like even in the newsroom today, people were like, there is no way you can't, like you're going to grow a tail. All of the things I'm sure you've probably heard for the last however many years. How do you know it's safe and what are you looking for to make that judgment? So the reason it's not safe is usually after a big storm, uh, it's because of sewage. So it's human sewage that's getting into the river. Now the Anacostia has gotten its tunnel. And what the tunnel does is it actually catches right now about 90% of all of that sewage. And that's been happening the past five years. So there's a whole lot less sewage getting in. And at that same time, we have a new tunnel opening up later this summer. And Maryland has also been fixing a lot of its sewage leaks. So for the past five years, actually the past 20 years even, there's been a whole lot of work going on across the watershed, reducing that sewage, and we're seeing the fruits of that labor now. And if you want to do the swim on the 8th, you can get involved. There's a, a sign-up sheet, 18 or over. Tell everyone where you're going to be able to swim on this permit and why you chose that location. So it's good to keep in mind that the permit is very finite, right? It's only going to be while we are there running the event. It's only going to be with us. And if you're signed up already ahead of time, that's going to be uh, a ticket on Eventbrite that's free. It's also through our website, anacostiariverkeeper.org. And we're going to be splashing into the river from the new paddle dock at Kingman Island. How do you know it's safe? What are you testing for that you can say, okay, today's good? So the problem is sewage, and the problem in the sewage is all the microbes and pathogens that might make us sick from sewage. And so what we test for is E. coli. So it's important to note that E. coli does not usually make us sick, but it gets in the news every time it does. 
Uh, we all have E. coli in us, but E. coli is only found one place naturally, and that's in the guts of warm-blooded animals, birds and mammals. So if you find E. coli in a waterway, somebody has pooped, and that poop has gotten into that waterway, and so we use it as a proxy for all the things that might make us sick. So we use an EPA-approved test for E. coli. Our volunteers go out Wednesday mornings, they pull water samples, and we come out with a number sometime on Thursday from how many E. coli were in the sample that we took for each site. And so there's a, a safe amount, numbers-wise, of E. coli per small sample bottle, and that's what we judge it by. So if you look at the water quality map on our website, anacostiariverkeeper.org, green is good, red is bad. You, you made the announcement earlier today that this was going to happen. What's the reaction been? Have people been all in a couple? Yeah, maybe I'll go on the next one, see how the first one goes. What have you been hearing? So we started asking you know, guests and would-be speakers to come a little ways early. And most of them said yes. And we had our first public sign up I think within maybe half an hour of the, the event going public this morning. Right on, Trey Sherrard, the Anacostia Riverkeeper. Have fun with that uh, first splash in half a century out there on the Anacostia River. Awesome, great to see that the Anacostia River is making some changes. Still ahead, a landmark Supreme Court decision on affirmative action is looming. Northern Virginia Bureau reporter Drew Wilder explains what's at stake for local schools and those around the nation. Then staying healthy without using medication, how practicing yoga can help relieve your chronic pain. Whether you need electrical, plumbing, or HVAC service, FH First expert technicians have you covered. Now, during our Super Summer Comfort event, schedule any of FH First award-winning services and score $75 off. That's an astonishing $75 off any electrical, plumbing, or HVAC service now only during FH First Super Summer Comfort event. From flickering lights, pesky leaks, to keeping you cool during the sweltering summer heat, you know who to call. 877-GOLFER-FHFIRE.COM Welcome back to The Rundown. Colleges and universities are anxiously awaiting a landmark decision from the Supreme Court on affirmative action. The high court is expected to rule this week on lawsuits that allege two top schools in the country are discriminating against Asian students in order to admit more black and brown students. Northern Virginia Bureau reporter Drew Wilder has more on what's at stake as justices determine if schools can use race as an admissions factor. A landmark Supreme Court ruling hangs in the balance tonight as the country awaits a decision on whether colleges may factor in a student's race during the admissions process. The conservative-leaning court is considering a renewed argument that's decades old. Is factoring in race a violation of the 14th Amendment or the Civil Rights Act? It seems highly likely that the Supreme Court is going to strike down affirmative action. Kim Ford Mazrui directs the Center for the Study of Race and Law at the University of Virginia a school built by enslaved people who weren't allowed to attend the institution until more than a century later. Now, UVA's leadership says racial diversity and excellence go hand in hand. In November, UVA's president and provost issued a joint statement saying in part, quote, regardless of the court's ruling, we will remain steadfast in our commitment to make diversity a core part of the educational experience. An experience that Roger Davidson at Bowie State University says is a benefit to all students at every school. If everybody comes from the same place and the same background, there's no intellectual growth. The Supreme Court has upheld aspects of affirmative action in the past, specifically saying schools may factor in race as one part of a holistic consideration, but schools cannot set race quotas. Those decisions were cited just last month by a federal appeals court panel that ruled in favor of Fairfax County Public Schools when considering whether admissions changes to the elite Thomas Jefferson High School were discriminatory against Asian American students. Still, eight states currently ban affirmative action outright. California was the first in 1996, and Ford Masrui says California has tried to balance racial admission equity in other ways with limited success. Especially with respect to black students, it, it's, it's not... Uh, it's not nearly as, as robust as it used to be, especially at the most you know, elite schools. Affirmative action originated as a way to address generations of discrimination. Now, two generations since segregation in schools was banned and the Supreme Court weighs rolling back one path to what many universities consider equality in education. Reporting in Northern Virginia, Drew Wilder, News 4.
Thanks, Drew. And some D.C. public school students are getting college scholarships courtesy of Kappa Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. The Xiomega chapter awarded $150,000 in scholarships as part of their Centennial Jubilee celebration. Our very own Mola Green emceed Sunday's ceremony at the Marriott Marquis. And our parent company, Comcast, was the title sponsor of the event. Look and at all our friends. Look at that. I know. It's the whole, it's the whole NBC4 yes. team there. Oh man, it was an awesome day and they surprised those scholars with laptops as well awesome. to take to college this fall. By the way, Jimmy Olabanji mm -hmm. was the one who basically organized this whole event. Oh, cool. And, yeah, she did a lot of work behind the scenes, so I want her to make sure she gets her flowers too. But Shout out to Jumi on yeah. that. What an awesome, awesome day. Yes. Well, we're working for you for your health. Don't let chronic pain slow you down. Yoga blends movements and poses with deep breathing, meditation and stretching. And as we learned it has many health benefits, it may also be able to help you fight back your chronic pain without medication. Hi, Talia, welcome, come on in. Talia Castropozo turned to yoga after developing back pain. After my pregnancy and, you know, dancing professionally for so many years, I had a lot of back pain and basically yoga really helped me, you know, feel better. Whether it's your hip, back, knee or shoulder, yoga may help manage chronic pain. It improves flexibility and helps build muscle and core strength, which can help alleviate discomfort. Inhale, arch the back. If you have chronic pain, Chaya, who is a certified yoga teacher, recommends finding the right type of yoga class for you. Find a class that has the words beginner in the title or slow or gentle, restorative. If your issue is really intense, maybe you want to find a chair class. Inhale, lift your head, your shoulders. Chaya says the cobra pose can help relieve some stress from back pain. This pose is very good for creating stability in the lower back and flexibility in the lower back. So it firms all the muscles in the back body. Busy schedule? Try yoga classes online. Just make sure you have a good yoga mat like the IUGA Pro Non-Slip Yoga Mat that has good CR ratings for cushioning and grip. Yoga may also have mental health benefits. The deep breathing involved, for example, can help relieve stress. After practicing yoga, I feel integrated, I feel happy, I feel flexible, I feel ready to take on the day. I'm not a health expert, but I highly recommend yoga. Consumer Reports suggests getting your doctors okay before starting a yoga program and seeking out knowledgeable teachers. Also during class, don't be afraid to skip some poses or ask the teacher for modifications. Very cool and relaxing too. Mm -hmm. Coming up on the scene, Wes Anderson's new movie Asteroid City has fans diving into their own cinematography at home, how the trend started and the tips for making your own short films on the way. His films have a look, they have a certain feel. We're talking about Wes Anderson, who mm -hmm. hit the big screen again this weekend with Asteroid City. I love all his movies, and I can't wait to watch this one. You've probably un also noticed that people on social media are doing the DIY yes. Wes Anderson-inspired <laughs> reels and TikToks. I look at DC's Wes Anderson vibe and the ongoing trend in the scene. You and your accomplices may still face felony prosecution, possibly even a treason charge. I'll fight it all the way to the Supreme Court if necessary, and win. Asteroid City takes place in a 1950s American desert town with that signature Wes Anderson look. A lot has to do with the symmetry of a location. A lot has to do with the color palette of a location. Best-selling author Wally Koval is something of an Andersonologist. His online community, Accidentally Wes Anderson, has more than a million members. It's difficult not to find an AWA location when you kind of just spin around and point at a location in DC. At one point, AWA chronicled DC. They even made an official map, including U Street's historic Lincoln Theater. Much like fitness, home improvement, or baking trends, people have been making their own Wes Anderson content online. That's Maggie Moore, our digital reporter, and Sophia Barnes, our co-author of the Weekend Scene newsletter, making an at NBC Washington TikTok of the Wes Anderson trend. So back in April, a TikTok user named Ava Williams made this video kind of romanticizing her commute on the morning train. And since then, as things on the internet do, it's kind of snowballed into this bigger trend. It's all about being simple, easy, and clean. So think, straight on shots, maybe they move a little up or a little down. Bright pastel colors, 
vintage scenery, and maybe retro nostalgic details like an old movie ticket stub or a melting ice cream cone. I think it's cool that people are able to take you know, these mundane tasks overlay that with something that brings a little bit of brightness, a little bit of color, a little bit of excitement, and maybe a smile to your face. I'm, I'm all for that. Here's why the historic Lincoln Theater really works. It's a grand, important room. The color palette pops, especially if you mess with the color grading and lots of symmetry, seats, balconies, curtains. We'll debut Maggie's TikTok on Wednesday in our Weekend Scene newsletter, so be sure to subscribe now. And if you try the trend for yourself, tag us. Most importantly, just have fun with it. With the scene, Tommy McFly, News 4. I felt like you need to be there with like a powder blue <laughs> bellhop suit and like glasses or something, right? The prop department was on, was on vacation. Right, right. And a camera, <laughs> like an old fashioned camera. I could see it right now. All right. After the weekend, Ed Sheeran performed over the weekend at FedEx Field as part of his mathematics tour. And one man who resembles Sheeran decided to take advantage of this on Saturday. Check it out. You want to explain to us what you're doing there? Uh, I'm just tattooing myself. That's Brian Rose, who looks like Ed Sheeran, and posted on his YouTube channel, being Ed Sheeran at wow. the Ed Sheeran DC concert. People were like turning and looking, and he was, you know, signing autographs and taking photos. Look That's at that. That's nuts. Yeah, yeah. He's I, st I could tell the difference. To me, I, I know that that's not him. I would be able to figure it out. Herndon's own Brian Rose. He's definitely fooled some people in the past. Wow. That is for sure. <laughs> Well, and that'll do it. Yeah, and he had fun doing it. So mm -hmm. what are you going to do? Thanks for joining us for the rundown. I'm Anya. And I'm Tommy McFly. We'll see you back here tomorrow.